Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After running through the news you need to know about, we run you through the fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. We have so much to talk about in today's show that it's, as a fan, the fact that we have to hear all of this until the 17th of March um, is insane. Um, it's starting to get a little frustrating between the Najee, what, between what are the Dolphins going to do with the third pick? All of the other stuff surrounding that, when it comes to, we could trade down, who are we going to pick if we stay there? The Deshaun Watson rumors, now we have this Matthew Stafford stuff hanging over our head. There's so much going on that it, and we have to wait so long to get answers to these questions. I don't know how the heck I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I'm already off the, I'm, I'm, I've jumped off the cliff. I'm off the wagon. I'm off the train. I'm done with all of this Deshaun Watson stuff. I don't care anymore. I have, I've gotten to the point where it is insane, and that brings us to our first news story. We just got a report today from the Senior Bowl, because obviously the Dolphins are there coaching the Senior Bowl, which is awesome. They're coaching Najee Harris and uh, Devontae Smith and some of those great players that we all love, which is very exciting. And we have some reports on them later that I'm very excited to, to talk about. I wanted to, sh- to start with this, though, because, like I said, it's just, this is, to me, it's getting to, uh, to ridiculous n- ridiculousness at this point. Um, th- this report came out today, the day I'm doing this podcast. It comes from the Senior Bowl. It comes from the Miami Herald. And it's this is reported by Adam Beasley, uh, who really, I don't honestly believe any of these stories, if I'm being completely honest with you, because a lot of them contradict each other. So one of them has to be true, and all three of them can't be true. Um, and again, this comes from the Miami Herald. Uh, this is a very long article, so it's gonna it might take me a minute to find the exact quote. Miami Dolphins' Deshaun Watson chatter intensifies at Senior Bowl. And what you're really looking for is this quote, and it it is buried within this this article. So this might so here we go. I got it right here. This again comes from Adam Beasley. He says, "Quote: The chatter is getting louder." said one informed league source. Watson feels like the situation in Houston is unfixable and Miami is seen as the frontrunner behind the scenes. Here's another report contradicting this. This comes from the exact same publication from the Miami Herald. And this comes from, I think Armando's there in the Miami Herald as well. Um, He says that the Jets are the frontrunner because of Robert Sala obviously going to New York as their new head coach. But now, days later, whatever it was, a week after that report comes out, this report comes out saying a completely different story. And here's the thing about the Dolphins connection is Adam Beasley, this is the second time someone has reported that the Dolphins are the front runners. Um, and, you know, one thing that I think is very interesting and very important in this article that we have to take note of, it says if he asks for a trade, the Dolphins would be the front runners. Um, and again, this dude hasn't even asked for a trade yet. This reminds me of when Brett Favre kept unretiring and retiring and unretiring and then retiring again. And then he unretired, and then he retired again. And it's you know it you know it, no wonder. Listen, I'm sorry if you hear the dog in the background; he's crazy. But the point is, all of this is a bunch of nonsense. Don't believe it. We've already talked about: is it smart for the Dolphins to make this trade? Yes, no doubt it is. The team just won ten games, adding a top five quarterback to a ten win team. Um, to contend for the AFC East Championship and other championships in the future is obviously a no-brainer. Will it happen? We won't even know until March 17th. So we actually, we literally have to deal with this nonsense for a long time. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm already sick and tired of it. This is the last time I'll ever talk about it, unless something crazy comes out. But at this point, to me, the thing that's frustrating to me about this stuff is it just feels like these reporters are taking advantage of the situation They're not really getting credible sources, and they're just speculating. That's what it feels like to me. It's it's really annoying as a fan to have to sit here and read this stuff because it's like this is just for clicks. This has nothing. There's no substance behind this. There's no evidence. There's no facts. It's literally just speculation. And obviously, they can just throw anonymous people like, oh, this is from a league source. It's like, what does that even mean? Like, you can't have again three different reports saying different things. And all of them be true. So something, someone's lying. Someone doesn't have a credible source. This whole situation is very annoying. And, and you know, it's, it's also very annoying, especially for Dolphins fans who just picked a quarterback in the top five. Okay? So the whole thing is just ridiculous. And, again, it just, like I said, it just feels like 
a lot of this stuff is just taking advantage of the whole just the Deshaun Watson story um, and just getting clicks, in my opinion, because I don't understand what the heck. Like this report here, the Adam Beasley report. There's not like the most of it is just his is just opinion based. There's it doesn't even really focus on the connection between the Dolphins and Deshaun Watson. He just really speculates if it's a you know a good idea, the Senior Bowl, and then gossip, uh, and then just has this one quote in here is which is really why he clicked the, the article, um, and it and it just you know it lists an anonymous source that who knows who it is and all that other stuff. So it's, again, as as a fan, it's frustrating, and uh, it's just we won't get any answers to any of these questions until. March 17th, and I'm sick and tired. I just can't read another Deshaun Watson. And the whole thing about him wanting to go to the Jets is actually ridiculous. Why would you leave the the, the Houston Texans because they're... This is the reason why he's leaving. They're, they're a dysfunctional organization. Their owner sucks. Whatever he did with Deshaun Watson, I don't want to speculate on that, but obviously it wasn't good. It was enough for the relationship to sour. And they make poor decisions as an organization, r- roster-wise. Even J.J. Watt was fed up with that organization last year. So you want to go from there to another dysfunctional organization with another owner that makes bad decisions is not even really there. His brother runs it, for God's sakes. So it doesn't... I just don't understand that. And it, the report was from the Silguero report that he wants to go there because Robert Sala was hired there. What does that have to like? I don't understand. Just because someone a head coach that you like goes somewhere, I don't know. It, the, the whole thing doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why you would want to go. The, even if they had Deshaun Watson, they'd have to give up all of their capital, and they're still a really bad roster. He's just going to another Houston Texans. The receivers are actually worse. Their roster is actually worse than the Texan roster. The Texans roster is. So. Why would they, I don't understand that? To me, that's just again just a, just a bunch of nonsense. All of it's just a bunch of nonsense. And obviously, you have Deshaun Watson wearing other people's jerseys and hats and all that crazy stuff. It's all literally nonsense. All of it. And it's I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. So it just you know it, the whole thing is just frustrating at this point. So let's move on. And this is what I really wanted to get into because this is this is awesome. The Senior Bowl stuff is awesome. Um, and there's not like a whole lot of actual, uh, in terms of, you know, we're, we're just going to kind of bounce around here because there's a whole lot of stuff to go through. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Devontae Smith connection. So this is what Devontae Smith had to say about the Tua Tagovailoa and them reuniting in, in Miami. Devontae Smith says he's talked with Tua about reuniting in Miami. And obviously he says that would be nice. And, you know, Brian Flores has come out and said some very nice things. Um, some very nice things about him um, and how great of a football player he is. Brian did. I can't find the exact quote, um, which is good. You know, I think we all love Devontae Smith. You know, we've had – there's obviously been questions about his size and weight. He literally has – he's literally the same size as Marvin Harrison. So just because you are that size and that weight does not mean – you won't be a great player. We've seen it many times before. Drew Pearson, I think, weighed, weighed like 170. Uh, and obviously, I don't know if Drew is in the Hall of Fame or not, but he was a taller... He was actually taller than... Um, he was taller... He was like a little bit taller than Devontae Smith, and he played in the 70s, and he, served, he had a very good career. So, um, And he was famously underweight. Uh, so, uh, to me, the whole weight... The weight size thing, really just the weight thing, um, uh, is not an issue. So this is what Brian had to say about Devontae Smith. He says, Devontae Smith is talented, talented, productive, tough, smart, and he's a very good player, um, which obviously doesn't really mean anything. But at the same time, you know, I think this is really between Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith. I think that's really the players that are on the Dolphins fans' minds as their number one wanted pick in the draft and uh, and I think everybody would be very excited if they got him sorry guys I just kind of lost my train of thought but yeah I love Devontae Smith and again I don't think like I said the size thing is an issue we brought two other examples of guys who were kind of undersized in terms of weight and uh, had very successful careers careers as receivers um 
okay, so here, here, here's another interesting interesting story involving the Dolphins and Najee Harris, who's probably my second favorite player in the draft, if not my favorite. Um, I love this dude. He's very, he's so fun to watch. He's going to be a superstar. Um, and this, this news report comes from the Palm Beach Post and Joe Shad, who's always kind of nailed it. Um, and this is, uh, about Najee Harris. And, um, this is it right here. He says, quote, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Miami Dolphins have shown a lot of interest in Najee Harris um, from the, in the Senior Bowl. Obviously, we hold the 18th pick. The Steelers hold the 24th pick, so we're still ahead of them. My dream scenario. This is my dream scenario, okay? Uh, my dream scenario is if we keep Tua, who I still believe in, still can believe a very good player, and I've watched a lot of Tua stuff uh, in the... In the uh, a few weeks um, since all this Deshaun Watson, Watson stuff started up, and it get, he's a lot better than a lot, I think a lot of people remember. Um, and I'm very excited to see if we if we get him weapons, what he can do. But I'm getting off track here. So staying on the Najee Harris Devontae Smith topic and how the Dolphins are showing interest in them, which they could get both of them. My dream scenario in the first round, if we don't give up any of our picks. Um, is we draft either Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase. We get Najee Harris with the 18th pick. And then we get Jalen Waddell um, somewhere in the later to first rounds if we have to trade back up trade back up into the first round. Because you guys got to remember, we have two second round picks. So we could easily trade back into the first round and pick Jalen Waddell. And that would be like... I would, I would probably n- cease to exist because of the, the amount of happiness... That I would feel that would be like the coolest draft of all time, um, just to get all those three and reunite them with Tua. I mean, the speed, the talent, the open field, everything that they would bring to the team would be amazing. Uh, and it's you know this offense is desperate in desperate need of playmaking. And I'm not talking about just deep threat because we do need a deep threat. We don't have one. We didn't have one last year. So Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith would fix that. Devontae Smith is a very good deep threat. He's a great route runner and he's got very good speed, underratedly good speed. Uh, and he's, Devontae Smith is more of like an all-around number one receiver. Jalen Waddle is like a clone of Tyree Kill, or maybe like a Will. He's a better version of Will. He's a way better version of, uh, of Will Fuller because not only can Jalen Waddle go deep, but he does a lot of other stuff. He's very good in the open field. I mean, he did a lot of special team stuff when he was at Alabama. He's great in the open field after the catch. So he gives you not only can he catch an 80-yard bomb for a touchdown, but he can catch a five-yard curl or five yard shallow cross or slant and go all the way to it for a touchdown he's a tough physical receiver who has a lot of speed and he's got great hands he's almost i think to be honest with you and I, this is probably i don't know if you guys agree with me but he's i think he's a better version of henry ruggs um in my opinion so to get all three of those guys in, in, in one round would be amazing and Najee harris dude Every time I watch Najee Harris, I, I hope to God the Dolphins pick him. And obviously, this and I don't want to I want to stay on topic here with the report that the Dolphins have shown a lot of interest in him. He is so talented. Um, he's going to be a superstar, um, like a superstar in the NFL. He's going to he fits to he is so I don't think I can't remember the last time I've seen someone at his size. And to be honest with you, the best thing that he does is catch the ball out of the backfield. He's so smooth in the open field. He's he's great. He's a good route runner. He gets a lot. He gets really good separation. He he's like a faster, maybe kind of similar speed, similar player to Le'Veon Bell. Very similar. Different running styles though, but same type of skill set where they're so good, uh, running the football and catching the ball out of the backfield. I I can't say enough about Najee Harris. I mean, just a great player, and whoever gets him is getting a superstar. Um, so yeah, I think we, we've pretty much covered all of the senior bowl rumors between the Deshaun Watson, the Najee Harris, and the Devontae Smith stuff. Uh, there wasn't really anything else to talk about. There is some offensive coordinator stuff, Brian Flores said. Um, <clears throat> if you watched or read some of the interview stuff, he said they're still going through the process. So there's really no news on that. Um, uh, our running backs coach, Stoogeville Studsville, I can't remember his name right now, 
Uh, he's calling plays in the Senior Bowl on, until the Dolphins can figure out what they want to do there. And apparently he's doing a very good job. Uh, so maybe that's something that the Dolphins want to look into. Uh, this also comes from Pro Football Rumors. I forgot to mention this. This is another news story. Not really a whole lot to talk about here. Uh, the Dolphins have hired a new uh, quarterbacks coach. They, they replaced Robbie Brown with Charlie Fry, who also coached to a... Uh, back in his seven on seven days, uh, the Elite Eleven or whatever it's called. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. He co- he also coached Trevor Lawrence there, so they have <clears throat> they have uh, some good chemistry there because uh, he's coached Tua before as a quarterbacks coach. So that should be interesting. Um and yeah, I don't really think uh you know obviously you think the Do- oh, I can't remember his name right now Dorsey, his last name is Dorsey, but he was the Bills. Um, obviously he's a, I think he's, what is he, an offensive, he's not even, what is he, is he, uh, is he, he's a quarterback's coach, right, for the Bills, um, uh, he also coached Cam Newton when he had the 2015 MVP season, I can't remember, it's Ken Dorsey, I think is his name, right, he works for Buffalo, I'm, I'm drawing a huge, yeah, Ken Dorsey, everybody wants Ken Dorsey as the Dolphins, and the Seattle Seahawks really want him too, um, he's had a lot of success, the thing I will say about this, uh, the whole Ken Dorsey thing, he gets a lot of, and, the thing that I love about the hire is he gets a lot of respect from people who have covered him before. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, um, but I do kind of like that. Uh, and, you know, he's kind of gotten lucky, uh, in my opinion, because Cam Newton... First of all, what Cam Newton did in 2015 was all Cam Newton. I, my, you know, my, my brother is a huge Panthers fan. I watched that entire season. Um... And, you know, they didn't even have a... They, or their leading receiver had 700 yards, and he still won the MVP. Uh, so, to me, that... I don't know how much we give to Ken Dorsey on that one. Because Cam Newton was running all over the place and just making plays. And then you go, he goes to Buffalo, and then he kind of... Brian Dayball and that offense with John Brown, Stephon Diggs, and Cole Beasley. It's like, how much of an effect did he actually have there? And, you know, a lot of credit's been... I mean... <laughs> The funny thing is, is I remember if you guys watched the uh, Chiefs Bills game, they gave Tony Romo credit for helping uh, Josh Allen fix his release. I mean, Josh Allen said that, so it's like, what? It, I don't know. I just don't know. Is Ken Dorsey really this good? He's not. He doesn't. He has no experience calling plays in the NFL. Um, we don't really know what kind of scheme he would run. If, if I'm not mistaken, I don't. I don't think he has ever called plays in the National Football League. So. I, I don't really know, and I, I wanted to bring this Ken Dorsey stuff up because I know a lot of people are talking about it. I don't really know. I feel like he's a little bit overrated, um, but we'll see. I mean, I, he does have some success being a quarterback's coach. I don't know what really... The thing is, is I want someone who's... I want someone who I... My dream scenario is, is I want someone to come in who's like, okay, we know what he's bringing to the team uh, in terms of scheme. And I think we need to do something different than what we've been doing. Like, to just continue what Chan Gailey's done is not going to work. We need to do something else. And whether that's Ken Dorsey or Doug Peterson, I think Pep Hamilton's, like, out of the race. Like, we know what kind of offenses they run. And, um, I, I, we're not Ken Dorsey, but Pep Hamilton and, um, uh, who else? Who, oh, Doug Peterson. We, we kind of know what they bring to the table. Uh, I think, I still think Doug would be the dream uh, scenario. I know a lot of people push back on that, but he worked under Andy Reid. He runs the same offense as the Chiefs do. Um, and if we were able to, you know, let's say we did get, get my dream first round scenario, uh, I think he, for him to coach those young guys and those that that, that much young talent uh, and really incorporate that into like a Kansas City like scheme, I think with Mike Gesicki and some of those guys that are already there, to me that's the dream scenario. And I know a lot of people don't really agree with that, but um, I, I, I kind of like that. So, moving on from that, we have two more topics to talk about before we get into the fan Q&A. And I really wanted to start here. So, I've seen a lot of articles, on, especially on Bleacher Report, of the number one free agent the Dolphins should, should target is Allen Robinson. And I've seen this a lot. And I really wanted to talk about this because I don't think that... First of all, I think that's an awful idea. Um, I don't like Allen Robinson... Um, the only reason I don't, I'm against this, he doesn't bring anything else to the team. Oh, sorry, guys. He doesn't bring anything else to the team. He's ve- he's a clone of Devontae Parker. He's a better route runner than DP, probably, but the best thing he does is catch fades. It's the same thing with Devontae Parker. is They're very similar. He's not a burner. 
He's not very athletically gifted. He's a possession receiver. Devontae Parker is a better athlete than him and does the same things he does. So he doesn't really bring anything else to the team. Uh, and that's, I just, I don't, I'm not spending, what's it, $80 million projected his contract is? I'm not spending that much money on this. It doesn't change anything on my offense. So uh, to me, I think that's just a bad idea. If this were someone like, if there was like a Deshaun Jackson or a Tyreek Hill like player who can take the top off of a defense and is kind of makes our offense a little bit faster, I'm fine. Not to mention the fact that Allen Robinson has a terrible injury history. And I know he's been better as of late. Uh, I just I don't think he's worth that much money, in my opinion. <clears throat> Preston Williams is very similar to him as well, and I think Preston's a better athlete than him. So it just, it, to me, th- there's no reason to, to, to spend that much money on something that we already have. We need to fill holes that we need. Um, and the, to me, that's that doesn't fix the issues on offense, in my opinion. Um... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. This is the last topic of the day. I was trying to find the fan Q&A so I could get that ready because we're almost there. Uh, not a big fan of Alan Robinson. The other one is Matthew Stafford. Now, this whole situation, to me, um, the Lions want a first-round pick. They want to trade up the three is the big rumor. Um, so, do I like Stafford? I love Stafford. I think he's a great player. I would never give up a first-round pick for him. Definitely won't give up the third overall pick. Uh, so to me, I would. I'm gonna. Go, to me, this is a hard no uh, on this one because I don't think he's 32 years old. I know he's got a lot of football left in him, but <clears throat> he's not on Deshaun Watson's level. He's not athletically gifted enough to carry a bad uh, a team that doesn't maybe have the, a ton of weapons. Um, and I'm, I w- we would still have the 18th overall pick, but I don't think he's worth the third overall pick in the draft. If the, if the Lions want a second-round pick, I guess I would think about it, but I would still lean heavily towards Tua. I would rather develop Tua, put some as many weapons as I can around him, than get Stafford. Now, the reason I don't think that about Deshaun Watson is because Deshaun Watson is a great player, a once-in-a-generational type of a player. He's probably the second-best quarterback in the AFC. So that's different than Stafford. Um, that, so, you know, that's why, to me, I just look at it differently. I, let's say the Dolphins do make it. I'm not, if, the, if, if somehow Stafford is a Dolphin, I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm not going to get on the podcast and be like ripping the Dolphins for that decision, but I still wouldn't make that decision if it was me. I, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm really in favor of that decision. Um, I, I, I don't think that'd be a good move for the organization, in my opinion. So um, to me, it's a hard no on Stafford um, because of those reasons. And I think anybody who gives a first-round pick for Stafford is making a mistake, um, especially if you're a team in the top 10. If you're a team in the top 10, not that we're on that level, obviously we win 10 games, um, but if you're like the the, the, Indy, the Bronco, someone like that, it's like he doesn't really fit. You, he needs to go to somewhere where they already have something in place offensively. Now, if he came here, he we would still win a ton of games, in my opinion. Our defense is good enough. We have enough cap space to do some things. And we still would have the 18th overall pick. He would definitely help the team. Don't get me wrong about that. But I would rather, again, put as much talent around in this team, infuse it with as much talent as I can in round two and see what he can do. Uh, I think uh, that, to me, that's the better avenue. Um, and I, I, you know, that's my opinion. So it's a hard note for me on Stafford. And that is just, you know, uh, I love Stafford though. He's a great player. I don't think any. I don't. Know, I wonder how Dolphins fans would react to that. I don't think it would be the best reaction um, if if the Dolphins, especially if the Dolphins, if the Dolphins gave up the third overall pick for him, th- dude, it would be anarchy. It would literally be anarchy uh, if that happened. That is not a good idea. Um, that's that's t- way too much on to 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 not only put on his shoulders, but that's way too much of a gamble in my opinion. Um, that doesn't really have that much of a high reward. Um, so yeah, Deshaun Watson, to me, is the only thing worth that, uh, in my opinion. And I've thought about this a lot, uh, and this is the last thing I was saying, the Deshaun Watson-Stafford stuff. To me, the third overall pick, um, to, uh, that's a lot. But the Dolphins still have two second round picks. You guys got to remember that. And if they don't have to throw another one in there, they could easily trade back up into the first round if they needed to, uh, to get maybe a higher degree or a higher 
caliber of player if they wanted to, uh, or they could just sit in the second round. I mean, it's not the end of the world, in my opinion, if, if that ends up happening. They still could get uh, some premier talent in the second round. We've seen it a ton of times. There have been a lot of great players that have come from the later rounds. You know, they got the receiver from Florida. I, his stock has risen a lot, so I doubt he'll make it to the second round, but who knows? We've seen some great receivers drop to the second round between Jarvis, D, excuse me, DK Metcalf. There was someone else that I'm forgetting a drop to the second round who was a great player recently. I mean, Stephon Diggs was like a fourth round pick. So it doesn't, that doesn't mean you can, you cannot find, excuse me, can't find playmakers in the later rounds. Um, let's see here. Let's get into the fan Q&A. This first question comes from Beef. He says, yo, Skaggs, unless you haven't talked about it already, what are your thoughts after the AFC and NFC championship games? I'll make this brief because obviously this is a Dolphins podcast, but it's one of the worst Super Bowl teams I've ever seen um, in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, I cannot believe they they won that game with Tom, who had a, who had a terrible... I mean, obviously the Packers turned the ball over too. I, I don't know. I just don't really like that team. I don't think that team... I think that team pretty much... The best team they beat, in my opinion, is the Saints in the playoffs. And if the Saints don't have um, a quarterback that's aging, they easily win that game. Uh, I just don't really think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are that good of a team. I don't really expect them to do much in the Super Bowl, in my opinion. So I, I don't. It's cool that Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes are playing each other, but I don't think that's going to be a very close game. <clears throat> let's let's go let's go. This next question comes from SM. He says this quarterback. Uh, he said, this QB the Colts drafted a couple years ago gets no press. Make a snap judgment on his abilities. The, this quarterback the Colts drafted a couple years ago gets no press. Make make a snap judgment on his ability. What are you talking about, dude? You talking about uh, Jim Kelly's nephew? I don't know. I don't know who exactly you're talking about. Sorry, uh, SM. This next question comes from <clears throat> Deportes uh, Espanol. He says, if we draft, uh, what's it, uh, Swell, he says, how do you feel, or, excuse me, let me restart here. Um, if we draft Swell, the tackle out of Oregon, how do you feel our starting five, uh, who moves where? So if we drafted him, where would, I, where, where would everybody go? <clears throat> I would say Robert Hunt would definitely move inside, and he would have to start at left tackle and probably move Austin Jackson. I think, well, if this happened, I think Austin Jackson would stay at left tackle because he has a year under his belt, and I think they would move Swell to right tackle. Obviously, that's to his blind side if he stays here, um, so I think that's probably what happened. You have Robert Hunt inside, left guard probably still Eric Flowers, and then your center could be Jesse Davis, or it's probably most likely still going to be Ted Karras if they re-sign him. Uh, the sixth question comes from SM. He says, I was looking, I was just looking at Gardner Minshew's stats, 37 tubs, 11 interceptions for his career, only only through five picks in 2020. He barely played in 2020, though. He would serve as well as a backup to two of your thoughts. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, as a backup, fine. Uh, I guess, yeah, he's a good backup quarterback. Has a little bit of competition to training camp as well. Uh... So yeah, I think you're right. I think that would be a good one at the right price. I don't know. Is he even a free agent? Um, I don't think so. But yeah, I like Gardner Minshew. I don't know why I said no so quick. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad idea for a backup quarterback. Uh, this next question comes from Beef. He says, hey, Skaggs, hearing this from a new source, what are your thoughts on Coach Flores not finding an offensive coordinator immediately? Should we be worried at all? No, I'm glad that he's taking his time. Um... I think he's not. It's a cool. It's cool that he gets to see the two candidates in house call plays at the Senior Bowl, and that's got to be on purpose, which is brilliant by Brian Flores to see how way they how well they handle it. Do they have chemistry with the offense? Can they get a flow going? Can can they get a rhythm going on a drive to really test that out? Can they get the feel of a game? Can they read defensive coverages? Can they adjust? Can they do all of that stuff? And you get to kind of see that firsthand at the Senior Bowl. That's a really really. Uh, that's that's awesome that he kind of gets to ch- test him on the job to see who, if he likes it, if he doesn't like it, uh, I think that's actually a good thing. Um, 
This this question comes from SM. He says, is it me or uh, is this coaching staff been subpar at finding consistency with the pass rush? Coaching staff been subpar at finding consistency with the pass rush. I've said this many times. That's just the scheme that we run. And obviously, we, we build the secondary into the... We, we build on the outside in, not the inside out on defense. And Coach Bron- or Coach Belichick has always said, Bill Belichick has always said, I don't know why I said Coach Belichick, like I take a couple snaps there, but um, oh, he, he, there's a quote he always says. Oh, I can't remember it. He said something uh, to Phil Simms, and Phil Simms always brings this up, um, where, you know, we really just want to kind of keep the quarterback in the pocket um, and kind of push the pocket. We don't really want to go upfield that much. We don't really want to get after it. We just kind of want to contain him and really just muddy the pocket uh, and keep those quarterbacks in the pocket. That's really what we do. There's a lot of three-man rush. We don't put our defensive line in a lot of beneficial situations if you're like we don't do five-man rushes all that much we don't want to get our defense alignment in one-on-ones we don't do that stuff we we play to our secondary <laughs> sorry because that's where we invest all of our capital in is the secondary so that's just the so it's so, a lot of it's the way we call plays um and uh yeah i think you never you're, i don't think you're ever going to really see that with this scheme and that's that's totally then again we were one of the best third down defenses in the nfl with that defensive line. So I th- and so has New England. New England's been the same way for a long time. Um so I you know, I think obviously Bill Bel- Bill Belichick knows a thing or two and Brian Flores uh obviously has taken that philosophy and, and done the same thing here. So So to answer your question, SM, is it me the coach staff has been so powerful finding consistency with the pass rush. That's just this scheme. Uh when they get when they do get pass rush, it really just relies on confusing the opponent, confusing the protection of the other team. Uh, that's how they get pressure. And then they rely on their secondary to hold up when they do do all, a lot of those zero-man blitzes and stuff of that nature. That's just how they do it. They don't um, put a lot of stock in that. Now, the, dif- the the thing that I kind of... I think this team still needs one more pass. I mean, Ogba's great. He fits the scheme a lot. They need another Ogba. Uh, that's all I really need. Um, in my opinion, we'll see if they do it, <clears throat> if they go out and invest in it. But at the same time, this defense was still dominant. Um, obviously a subpar performance at the end. Uh, but, um, <clears throat> we'll see if the Dolphins end up either getting JC Jackson, Stephon Gilmore, or Patrick Peterson, instead of someone like a Von Miller and Melvin Ingram, which I would be totally fine with if that's what they decide to do. And I know a lot of people might get upset about that. Was it you just used a first round pick on Igbenogany? Who cares? If they don't feel like he's ready to step in and do some things that they want him to do, Nick Needham kind of had a rough end of the year there. Well, let's go get a Patrick Peterson or JC Jackson or Stephon Gilmore to add it to those the great trio of corners. So I don't, I, you know, we'll see what they decide to do. But again, I think it's to answer your question, SM, it's scheme, it's philosophy more than it is anything. This question comes from SM. He says, break down GM Skaggs' plan to improve the offensive line specific to the running game. To improve the offensive line, number one, get a new scheme. That's first and foremost. Get a new scheme and a new philosophy on how you run the offense. We got to make these guys tough. We got to, and again, we did a lot, and Omar Kelly, really brilliant for pointing this stuff out. We did all too much pulling, dude. That offensive line was, unless you do it with Jesse Davis, who is more of that kind of a finesse offensive lineman. But Solomon Kinley and some of these guys, and that's why Michael Dieter did so good when he came in, because he could pull. He could get out in space. Solomon Kinley can't do that, and we did that a lot with him. And that we got hit in the backfield a lot when we did that. We need to be a power running team. We can't just dipsy do in both of them. Like sometimes we were a run, you know, we're a power running team. Sometimes we're pulling a guard, doing some zone stuff, not straight at you. And then other times we're in the empty formation and just slinging it all over the field. There was no clear vision for what that offense should have been. We need someone to come in and say, "This is what we're gonna do. We're either gonna pass this up the run, quick pass game, get the ball out to his hands quick to set up the run game, or we're gonna be a hard nosed football team who's gonna be a power run team uh, and we're gonna do a lot of play action." What what is the philosophy? You know, and I think a lot of that comes down to the scheme. So to improve the offensive line specifically, I think the first thing we need to do 
is to get someone in the building who has a vision of what the offense needs and should be. Uh, and then after that, I would say you got to make a decision on Jesse Davis, I would say, and maybe Ted Karras. Because sometimes, sometimes, that's a word. Sometimes, you know, especially Jesse Davis, I don't think he's the most physical guy in the world. I think Kinley and Eric Flowers fit that. Because I've seen it from them before. I saw it with Eric Flowers in Washington. I've seen it with Solomon Kinley at times as a Dolphin. Um, so I think the only two to really work is the center position, and I would say probably Jesse Davis. And I love Jesse Davis. He's a great pass protector. Uh, but and he's very versatile. And he's a very good asset that way. But he's not the most physical in the run. And I think I don't think he's ever really been that way. So I, to me, I think the number one thing is philosophy and scheme. Because Robert Hunt, players like that, the best thing that they do do is run block. Same thing with Solomon Kinley. He's a very physical, at least coming out of college, that was kind of the beat on them. Very physical offensive lineman. They just need a, a scheme that fits them, in my opinion. And a, and a clear, you know, this offense needs a clear objective. What do we want to accomplish every Sunday? Uh, and we didn't really have that last year. We were, again, not only we were switching quarterbacks constantly, but when we did, we switched our styles. The only time we really didn't do that was in the Raiders game, where both quarterbacks try to play the same style. Uh, even though when Tua was in, we kind of ran the ball a little bit more. Obviously, we, were, we ran less bootlegs with Fitz, because obviously we're not going to do that. But... There were we still ran some of those down the field things that we did with Fitz. That was the only game where that happened. In all the other games, it was like a hodgepodge of it was a mess. Uh, so let's go let's go uh, to this next question. This question comes from KC Fanatic. He says, I heard Fitzmagic isn't returning. Therefore, we should draft a backup quarterback for Tua. I think we should draft another quarterback to compete for the starting job. Don't get me wrong, I love Tua. That's not a bad idea. Um, I don't really love this class of quarterbacks. I, I love, I love, 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 love Zach Wilson. I think he's going to be a good player. I like Trevor Lawrence a lot. Trey Lance, Fields, Mac Jones, those guys are going to go in the first round. So I don't really see anybody who, you know, and I haven't done a, a good enough job of go, kind of going through some of those prospects, but... To me, nobody comes to mind right now through the draft. I think you would probably have to sign some veteran backup. Or let Fitz... And I've heard some other things where Fitz might come back, so we'll see. This next question comes from TR3MC. He says, Does Miami need to hire another coach besides an, coach besides an OC for the young players to develop and grasp the scheme they run? I think that would be the benefit of hiring someone in-house uh, as opposed to someone outside of the building because they kind of know what B-Flow wants. The players are also very familiar with them. Uh, I think that would be a huge, huge benefit of hiring someone in-house. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, no, I would say no. The Dolphins have changed their offensive line coach. They changed, their obviously, their quarterback's coach. So they've already kind of done that uh, in, in, in small ways. Thank you, question. Uh, this next question comes from Jack Hammer. He says, so this question is to the Deshaun Watson people out there. Oh my god, I've been wanting to answer this one. Who believe we should... This question comes from Jathammer. He says, so this question is to the Deshaun Watson people out there who believe we should give up the farm for him. How many Super Bowls... This is the best This is the best comment of all time. How many Super Bowls did Dan Reno win? When I read this, first of all, I'd, yeah, no disrespect to Jathammer, I just completely disagree with you in that statement. And here's why. If you've been a Dolphins fan for, let's say, the last 20, 25 years... Not 25 years, 20 years... Which probably is coming on 25 years now. We've had two playoff appearances. Well, no, wait. We've had four playoff appearances since, what, the 90s? Maybe one more than that. We've won one playoff game, if I'm not mistaken, since then. Um, what in the guy? Dan Marino kept... We were in contention every single year with Dan Marino. I would take Dan... Especially over the last 20 years. I would take Dan Marino any day of the week. They'd have to sit through some of the trash that I've had to sit through every single year. So yes, Jack Hammer, I would 1,000% absolutely take Dan Marino over the garbage that I had to sit through for 10... Multiple years. Multiple years. On some of the bad teams that we had to sit here and watch. I mean, I absolutely I would. Absolutely I would. Not everything is about winning Super Bowls. Now, it is. The, the ultimate goal is the Super Bowl and the championship. But you also want to root for a team that's contending every single year. You heard Stephen Ross say You heard Chris Grew say it. That was the objective of building the team the right way. We want to contend every single year. 
So do I. And I also want to watch a great quarterback. It, it's a dream of every Dolphins fan to wake up every Sunday and say, I get to watch Deshaun Watson this week. I get to watch Dan Reno this week. A Pro Bowl, a Hall of Fame caliber player. Okay? So 1,000%, I would rather have that than the utter sewage that we had to watch the last, let's just even keep it in the last 10 years. You know, I don't have to wake up every Sunday. I got to watch Philbin, Chad Henney this week, or I got to watch... Bro- the Brock Osweiler, t- that is so... I hope we never have to see anything like that again. That was dysfunction at its finest. Um, so yes, to answer your question, Jack Hammer. How many Super Bowls did Dan Marino win? You know what Dan Marino did? He brought greatness to this organization and a great chapter in the life of you know many Dolphins fans that got to live that, that chapter of being a Dolphins fan. And again, like I said, brought greatness and a lot of accolades to this organization and went down as one of the greatest players to ever take a snap under center. So yes, I would gladly take as many Dan Marinos as I I want or can have. So yeah, even if Deshaun Watson definitely wins a ring, at least we'll be contending and watching a great player every single Sunday. And one thing I want to bring up before we move on, if you look at the Texans' scores, especially after the first month of the season... They were in every single game. Their defense just couldn't stop anybody. It's, it's, that was one of the most entertaining 4-1 teams of all time. Because Deshaun Watson was carrying and doing... He was pulling off magic every single week. So, yes. I, yeah, I would... 1,000% I would. This next question comes from Beef. He says... Um, <clears throat> sorry, guys. I something right there. He says, hey, guys. Besides the rumors of getting Deshaun Watson, what are your thoughts of the, the rumors for us trading Matthew Stafford? Will that be good or bad for the Dolphins? Uh, and would he, would he be a good asset for the team? Um, he would be a great player. I think he would fit well in the system <clears throat> and some of the players that we have. But I would say no, especially if it costs a third overall pick. I'm just Or even, even the 18th pick. I'm just not the biggest fan of that. This next question comes from Ethan. He says, hey, Skaggs, would you trade the number three overall pick to the Lions for their number seventh pick? And Matthew Stafford. Um, I again, I would have to probably say no. Uh, I would have to get like something in return for that, maybe an extra second round pick or something like that to kind of sweeten the deal. But that deal straight up is not enough for me. This next question comes from Eric. It's not a bad trade though. I wouldn't say that's a bad trade. This next question comes from Eric. He says, "What is uh uh." But again, like I think, I just think it's a little, just a little too much. This next question comes from Eric. He says, "What is Sal Salvon Ahmed's place on the team this this next season?" Sorry, guys. Hold on. Let me restart here. Oh God, I wish I could read better. This next question comes from Eric. He says, "What is Salvon Ahmed's place on this team next season?" In my opinion, he looked like the best running back we had at times. I think he's a better runner and shifty in the run game, uh, in lanes, while Gaskin is a better catching threat. I don't. I don't. I thought that too until Miles came back and he just. I was like, yeah, he's the best running back on the team. He's a. He's got better vision. He's got actually. He's got way better vision. He's. He's just a better natural runner than Ahmed, uh, in my opinion. Uh, runs with power for his size. Very shifty. Can change directions really easily. He's very good in the open field. That's why he's so good in, in the pass game. I, I think like Gaskin overall is just a better player. So his role right now is just, to me, kind of a change of pace back. And he's not really even that because they're kind of similar in their run styles. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> uh, this next question comes from Ahmed or Ahmed. Ahmed. He says, uh, at what point do you think it is fair to make a judgment on Tua in the upcoming season? Could you ever picture Aaron, Aaron Rodgers in Miami in 2022? No, I don't think I could picture that. If if all if all goes right this off season and and and, and uh, two is still around, I actually I don't know. I I have a good feeling about it. I think the offense will take off if we can just nail the offense coordinator position, get as many playmakers as we can for two to throw to and hand off the ball, to hand it off to. Then I think uh, I think um, I think we're not. I think Tua, we won't even have to make a neg or a judgment at all. We would just be sold. Uh, in my opinion. This next question comes from Richard. He says, how about the Dolphins signing wide receiver T.Y. Hilton? He gave Dolphins a deep threat. He he will he would give the Dolphins a deep threat with 4-4 speed and can play in the slot. I'm going to say no. 
Um, he's not a deep threat anymore. Uh, he's not as good. I won't say he's not a deep threat anymore. He's not as good of a deep threat as he used to be. He's kind of a. He's kind of on the downturn of his career. Um, he can play in the slot. He's not as physical as you might want in the slot. Um, so I'm gonna have to say no on T.Y. Hilton. This next question comes from Beef. He says, "Hey Skag, so it's official. It will be Kansas City versus Tampa Bay at the Super Bowl, aka Brady versus Mahomes. Do you have any bold predictions who will win this year's Super Bowl?" Uh, I would never bet against Brady in these games, but the same thing is said for Mahomes. I mean, I already kind of discussed it. Uh, not to answer your question, Beef. Um, I guess the bold prediction I have uh, is that I just don't think it's going to be a very close game um, for the, in the Chiefs' favor. SM says, under what circumstances would you make a move for OBJ? <clears throat> um, this is kind of a um, this is a tough one. Um, If he wanted to go to New England, I would stop that from happening. I think that I think that's probably the circumstances I would do it. Um, hopefully, he doesn't leave Cleveland though. I just I think I would rather have Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase. To be honest with you, this is question comes from Beef. He says, "Hey Skag, is near the end of the AFC Championship game. What did you think of the Bills losing their composure and getting into fights? I had a good chuckle." But seeing Bills lose like they uh, like that made me realize we have a long way to go before we're really good playoff contenders. I disagree with that. We we played that same team, um, and Tua played better than Allen did, and we played them harder than they did. To, to, you got to understand something. Football is about matchups, and you know the Chiefs are. are um, I mean, if you remember, we were one fourth and one away from from getting the ball back, and Tua was going up and down the field that game. So who knows how that game would have ended. But um, And we were at home. Um, so I don't think we're a long way off. But, it, you know, football is about matchups uh, and stuff of that nature. And uh, we just don't match up well with the Bills right now. But, yeah, dude, I when Josh Allen threw the ball at the Chiefs defender's head. I was very happy. And I was very confused when, you know, if Cam Newton did that or Lamar Jackson did that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of someone else. If Aaron Rodgers did that, maybe. Uh, probably not. But, you know, if someone else did that, it would be a problem. But I don't I have no idea why Deshaun, nobody's talking on these sports shows that, oh, why, you know, Allen lost his compo- Like, you know, the, to me that's worse than Cam Newton not wanting to answer questions after losing the Super Bowl, throwing a ball at someone's head, you know. It's just kind of a bad look. Not that I care. I mean, if I don't care. That, to me, it doesn't mean... It just means he's competitive. But I just... every Anytime you see any of that, or receivers yelling or upset, you know, it always is a problem. This next question comes from uh, SM. He says, Rumor of a trade down with Detroit, which I think is seven, which is totally cool for an extra two this year. Yeah, that would be fine. But I don't know if I really want... St- do you really want Tua... Do you want Tua or Stafford? That's just what it comes down to. And I think, to me, I think I would, to me, and I love Stafford, but I, I just, I don't know. I would rather see what Tua can do. This next question comes from SM. He says, what does Tua's skill set uh, compare to, I think, Baker Mayfield? Uh, although I hope it's much better than that. It is much better than that. No offense to Baker Mayfield. I think something that Tua doesn't have that Baker has is arm strength. Uh, Baker has a really good arm. But Tua, you know, Tua has, I would say, uh, a Drew Bree, Bree, Drew Bree, I can't even speak. Drew Brees like arm. It's not. It's just a good arm. It's not great. It's a good arm. Uh, but Baker has a great arm in terms of the power that he can put behind it. Uh, but I think Tua, ha, Tua's feel for the quarterback position and his t- intangibles uh, in terms of just naturally being gifted at playing that position. Um, and once he learns the NFL game and has a full offseason under him, has more play, playmakers to throw to, the sky is the limit for him. 
Where he will go, we don't know. And that's why the Deshaun Watson stuff is so enticing. But to me, the thing that Tua has that a lot of... He just... Ne- there is just an it factor to him that not a lot of people have. And we saw a flash, despite what everybody wants to say, we still saw a lot of that against the Patriots, against the... I'm talking about the home game. Uh, the, the Cardinals, we saw it. Uh, and against the, um, the um, Chiefs, we saw it. Uh, we just need to see it more consistently. But... I think he has a better ceiling as a pocket passer than Baker Mayfield. Um, and making better decisions, too. I mean, he, his ability to process things fast and make a, a, the right decision is better than all, uh, than almost any rookie I've ever seen. I mean, the dude only... He only would have thrown um, uh, two interceptions on the year, I believe, right? Uh, if he didn't have that bad game against Buffalo. So, yeah. Uh, this next question comes from Ethan. He says, I found this surprising. Ogba finished with the same number of uh, total disruptions, 48, as Indianapolis DeForest Buckner, a first-team All-Pro selection, and ranked third in turnovers caused by pressures, five. Trailing only former Browns teammate Miles Garrett uh, in Buccaneers edge rusher Shaquille Barrett in the game-changing category. In nine sacks, seven rushes, and 32 defensive stops. And you will never... And you'll see what the tape will tell you. Ogba was a difference maker in 2020. Yeah, he didn't get enough uh, accolades. A lot of people on our defense didn't. Um, Byron Jones had a really good... Nick Needham, both of them had very good years. Uh, Like I said, you're going to give up plays in this defense. It's just every defense has a weakness. You're going to give up some deep throws. Even New England, I mean, that's the only... I mean. Devontae Parker, how many times have we seen him go deep on, on Stephon Gilmore and catch a 50-50 ball? We saw that with Darren Waller a couple times in Eric Rowe. It's just a part of it. It's going to happen. It's the one weakness of the te- of that defense because you put so much pressure on your corners, and that's why you invest in them, that you're going to give up a play here and there, whether it's a pass interference or whatever it is. So I thought, you know, a lot, there's a lot of guys on this defense that didn't get enough credit that they deserved. And it, Agua is number one on the list for sure. Um, this next question comes from SM. He says, how much is the third p- uh, pick worth to a quarterback hungry team if Justin Fields is still on the board? The third pick is worth a lot in general. It doesn't matter if it's a quarterback hungry team or whatever it is. This next question comes from SM. He says, I know you said in the past you prefer a veteran backup quarterback, but I like the quarterback Trask from Florida uh, if the price is right. Thoughts? I don't really like that dude. Um, from what I've seen of him, I haven't seen a lot of him. I just don't, he is stiff as balls. Like, he doesn't move in the pocket that well. Uh, and he actually is not a bad athlete, but for some reason, man, you just, you're just not going to get a lot done with that type of a pocket presence. He doesn't have a strong arm. Uh, he just doesn't have a lot of elite traits, I would say. But, you know, maybe a fourth, fifth round pick, you, you take a chance on him as a backup, who knows. But you really don't want a rookie quarterback as your, especially with a guy who's been in, who's only been in the league two years. This is his second season, so I still would lean towards a veteran backup there. And I believe, maybe we missed one. Um, but I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We answered every question. Um, very nice of you guys to, to ask these questions. Um, um, and yeah. Sorry, guys. Just I got the sniffles. I try not to. You know, you you start to get you get the coughs. You get the sneezes. It's not. It's not good. Um, but anyway. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Again, there's a lot to take in. There's a lot of information constantly coming in and out. There's a lot of fake information. There's a lot. I just want my name to be on the front. Because since it's been reported that the Dolphins are not by a beat writer in Miami, but just by, I can't remember who it was who first reported it, that the Dolphins are the front runners for Deshaun Watson. Every beat writer in Miami is going to take, even in New York, they're going to they're gonna want to report on it because their name is going to be on the front page of ESPN or on the front this news cycle. This is reported from so and so and so from the Palm Beach Post. This is reported from so and so so from this organization. So I think there's going to be a lot of that going on where you know people want their names out there, they want to take advantage of the hype that is surrounding someone like Deshaun Watson and where he's going to go. So I mean if Deshaun Watson is traded, there's going to be a cra- there's going to be a doc- documentary on it. Uh, and if it's the Dolphins, I mean that's going to be awesome. But um <clears throat> And to me, all the reason I bring that up is just it's annoying. 
uh, and it's it's hard it's hard to believe anything at that point. I just read you early in the show two different reports that contradict each other, and it's like what really is true? Who knows? And honestly, like I said before, I don't really care um, at this point. I'm just at this point you just kind of you're going through the motions and uh, you just want to get to March seventeenth just to get to like I said an actual answer to these questions. But uh, my uh, that's it. Um, yeah, um, that is it. Oh, sorry, guys. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys would do down in the comment section below. Let me know how you guys feel about uh, the soldier Sean wants and stuff, and if it's already annoying you. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.